Suicide bombs detonate in Afghanistan and Pakistan, plus Japan pledges anti-terror aid, and another Chinese tiger is nabbed for graft. For Wednesday, the 18th of February, 2015, this is the Asia Brief. Provincial officials said a group of suicide bombers attacked a police station in eastern Afghanistan on Tuesday, killing at least 22 officers and wounding 18 others. One attacker blew himself up at the gate of the headquarters of the Pul-i Alam, about 60 kilometers south of the capital of Kabul, said the provincial government spokesman. At least one other bomber detonated his explosives inside the compound where officers had gathered to eat. The attack on the police installation happened a day after Taliban insurgents killed at least 13 policemen in the southern Kandahar province. Pakistani authorities said a powerful suicide bomb went off just outside police headquarters in the eastern city of Lahore Tuesday, killing at least five people and wounding many more. Witnesses described the explosion as being so powerful that they were knocked to the ground. Television footage showed that the intense explosion shattered windows on nearby buildings and set several vehicles on fire. A senior police official told the media that the suicide bomber wanted to enter police headquarters but failed to do so due to several layers of police security. Jama'at ul Arar, a splinter group of the Pakistani Taliban, has claimed responsibility for the Lahore blast, calling it revenge for the hanging of some of their members recently. Their spokesman, Asan Ullah Asan, said such attacks will continue until Sharia law is implemented in Pakistan. The bombing happened hours after Pakistani security officials announced the killing of a commander of the Pakistani Taliban in an intelligence-led operation in the northwestern Swat Valley. Japan has pledged $15.5 million to help countries in the Middle East and Africa that are battling militants from the Islamic State group. Tokyo's foreign minister, Fumio Kishida, said Tuesday that the aid would support counterterrorism efforts, including increased border control and investigation capabilities. The counterterrorism package is twice the amount previously pledged by Kishida during a visit to Brussels last month. Separately, Tokyo has pledged $200 million to help refugees fleeing from Islamic State-controlled areas. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has vowed a tough response to the Islamic State militants, who beheaded two Japanese nationals last month. Chinese prosecutors said Tuesday a former top Communist Party official will face criminal investigation over allegations he accepted bribes. Su Rong was expelled yesterday from the party and stripped of all of his government positions, becoming the latest high-ranking official to be brought down by President Xi Jinping's anti-corruption drive. Su was a former party leader in Jiangxi province and the vice chairman of the Chinese People's Consultative Congress, the country's top political advisory body. On Monday, the Communist Party's internal graft watchdog, the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, said it found Su accepted huge bribes in return for granting government positions. As a senior CPC official, Su defied the party's political rules, seriously violated organizational discipline, and was involved in dealing out official positions, which had a vile impact on ranks of cadres and social ethos, the statement read. The Supreme People's Protectorate, which on Tuesday announced the criminal investigation, did not mention any specific charges Su may face, but the official Xinhua News Agency reported the SPP has taken measures against him. Later today on Asia Now, human rights on the Korean Peninsula. Certainly there are still human rights problems in South Korea, but I think if we compare them directly with North Korea, uh, it's really night and day. Perhaps the comparison may have been more apt back during the periods of military dictatorship uh, in South Korea when uh, certainly there was a systematic abuse of human rights uh, by South Korean governments. You'll be able to listen to that episode at 12.01 p.m. today. You can keep up with more news from the region by following Asian News Weekly on Facebook and Twitter. You can also send an email to the show with your questions, your comments, and your feedback. Just drop a line to podcast at asiannewsweekly.net. Subscribe to this and other podcasts at asiannewsweekly.net or in your favorite podcast application. Thank you so much for listening today. For the Asia Brief, I'm Steve Miller. <laughs>